everyone. My name is Gerald Tostavordek. I'm a licensed real estate agent in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and you're listening to the real world of real estate. Today, we've got a special episode for you. I get a lot of requests from different folks who have different investment models, and I, I don't do promotional podcasts, but I thought I'd get so many requests. Why not do a session where I give everyone five to 10 minutes to Describe their investment model, what they do, where they invest, who their model is for, how you get in, how you get out, all those kinds of things. So without further ado, let's dig into a series of guests and their different investment models to see if there's something there of interest. All right, here we go. Okay, and my first guest is CJ Callio of WNN Properties. CJ, welcome to the show. And why don't you folks tell the folks a bit about yourself and your investment model? Yeah, Gerald, thanks for having me on. Our investment model is simple, uh, buy and hold rental properties for cash flow. And the reason why we picked that strategy goes back to our story of where, where, where it all started. And I was a UPS driver by trade and living in Hawaii, which is a very high cost of living state. And it's a good paying job that allows me to live a good life out there. And um, we just, I just didn't, I didn't want to trade the time for money forever. So I got to a point in my career where I was like, you know what, enough's enough, time to change. And initially, real estate wasn't on my radar. It was my wife. And uh, she found that buy and hold for cash flow can solve our immediate problem of replacing our income. And that's why we stuck with it. And from there, we were able to grow a large portfolio in a matter of four years to quit our jobs and say goodbye. And we've been um, since then converting over to a mentorship business so we can guide others in our investment strategy which is buy and hold for cash flow. Um, so looking at specific markets that make sense, not all markets are cash flowing markets and not all markets are markets where you want to invest in. Um, and our one of our niche strategies in the buy and hold is the BRRRR. So that stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. And it allows investors with limited capital to compound their portfolio growth very quickly. And we've even taken that into the commercial realm as well. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, finally, you can move out of that Hawaii and get somewhere warm, eh? <laughs> so, all right. So can you tell us, like, do you have any sort of a minimum investment for investors, at the amount, a minimum amount or any sort of an idea of, of the scale that you're looking for? Yeah, so we tend to work with a lot of new investors who haven't done any real real estate or have very minimal experience. And our request isn't more about the funds because funds are available everywhere if you know where to look and how to present opportunity. Um, we request that you give it a long enough time to create a result. So our program runs for about a year. And if you can stay with it for a year, we are very confident you can get a result and then see from there, is this strategy going to serve you and what you're looking to accomplish? Or maybe this strategy isn't what you thought it was going to be and you can then shift into something different in real estate. Okay, so you're basically looking for a, about at least a year uh, commitment time, and I'm guessing probably more to, to see the good results. Yes, sir. And 20, 20 hours or so a week was what we, we like to use that as a standard for amount of time to invest in, because when you start anything new, you get to learn a lot and it can be overwhelming. And if you're only putting in minimal hours of work, you're going to get minimal results. And we're all about taking massive action quickly to get results so then we can learn from experience rather than theory. Okay, cool. So there is a time component also. It's not just a strictly passive investment. There is a time commitment to the model. Yes, sir. Oh, cool. Okay. And so CJ, to find out more, where do people go to, to find out more about your investment model? Yeah, they can check us out on Instagram at WNN Properties. Um, from there, they can click on one of our many links that access different resources and tools out there that might get them started. And for those that don't really know who we are and, and don't quite trust that what we do or who we say we are is real, we have little low entry bearing um, products out there like a boot camp. It's a six hour course that people can go through that gives them ideas on how to get their first rental property in the first 90 days. Okay. And what's your, what geographical area do you work in? It, like, where do you want investors from or what areas like all over the United States, just Hawaii, all over Canada, the world, what, what area? Yeah, we like to work with those in the U.S. We do have some interest and in, um, people that we work with in Canada. Um, and for investment locations, 
there it really comes down to what they want, right? So we do have markets that we focus in on. And if it's not a market they want to build in, goal is to learn the fundamentals so you can take it and do wherever you want to make investments in. Okay. And is a good place also your website? Is that a good place for them to check out as well? They can always go to wnnproperties.com and see a bunch of our information. We have some videos, we have some testimony. We also have some free product. If they want to go to this other website, why not now in realestate.com? It gives them a PDF tool that they can reference on how we invest and the strategies we use. Cool. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I'm out of questions. Anything else you wanted to add on your investment model? No, just start with your why, guys. If you're looking to invest in real estate, really ask yourself why real estate. And from there, you start to know where you got to go to get what you want. Excellent. Good start. All right. Thank you, CJ. Okay, folks. My next guest is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Jay, welcome to the show. And why don't you tell the folks uh, what your investment model is? Sure. Well, Gerald, thank you so much for having me come on for a few minutes to talk about what it is I'm so passionate about. My wife, Carol Joy, and I, we've been investing in single family houses primarily. We've done shopping centers and condominium developments as well, but primarily single family houses since 2003. So we've been doing it for quite a while and we've rehabbed over 500 houses. Well, here's what happened, Gerald, and why I get so passionate about private money, and here's why. You see, from 2003 to 2009, we relied on the local banks to fund our real estate deals, and that worked out fantastic for the first six years. But then in January 2009, I learned about this global financial crisis that was going on. Well, I didn't know there was a global financial crisis until then I got a financial crisis when my bank, my local bank, cut me off, shut down my line of credit with no notice. I had two deals under contract, two houses to fund with profits over $100,000 and no way to fund my deals. Well, in just a few short days, I learned about private money and what private money is. Not relying on banks, not relying on institutional funding. And I'm not talking hard money. I'm talking private money doing a business with individuals. So here's what I did, Gerald. I put on my teacher hat. I put my program together and I started teaching people that I already had an association with what private money is, what self-directed IRAs are, how they could use investment capital or how they could use retirement funds to get high rates of return safely and securely. So by putting on my teacher hat, Gerald, I was able to raise $2,150,000 in new private money funding for my real estate deals. And you know what, Gerald? I did it without ever asking anybody for money. I've never asked anybody for money. I've never pitched a deal what do I do? I educate them on what private money and private lending is. They tell me if they're interested, they, how much money they've got to work with. And then I put a deal together for them to invest in. And I call them up with the great news phone call and tell them I can now put their money to work. I don't have to ask them if they want to do the deal. They've been sitting by the telephone waiting for the phone call. So this whole world that I'm in is how to never miss out on a real estate deal because you did not have the funding and how to attract actually more private money for your real estate deals than you can actually use. Oh, well, that's interesting model. And so you're looking for the investors you're looking for are the private money investors. That's, that's the clientele that you work with. Yes. Yeah, so actually, of course, we buy directly in this market from for sale by owners of single family houses. And then we have our private lenders that we have got lined up. That's got private money to fund the deals. So we use this money to fund the deals for either fix and flip or we'll sell houses on rent to own or lease purchase. So they'll fund those as well. So anytime that the seller of the real estate, the single family house, whatever, of course, you can use this private money for multifamily as well. Whenever they require all the cash, then it's the private money and the private lenders that we're using to fund the deals. Oh, cool. Okay. And so what geographical area or areas do you uh, work in, do you invest in? 
Yeah, I personally, my wife and I, we personally invest in Eastern North Carolina, but we have over 2,000 students across the nation and in Canada that are using our techniques in order to raise their own private money for their own real estate deals. North Carolina, is that on the East Coast? Did I get that right? Yes. That's some we beautiful coastline the there. Coast. I'm sorry? sorry? There's some beautiful coastline in North Carolina, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. We're at the southern tip of what they call the Outer Banks. So we're straight up the coast north from Florida, uh, about halfway up the coast. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so um, so how do folks get into your um, investment model and how, do, how and when do they get out of it? Right. Well, actually, uh, people would not be investing. Well, if it's a private lender, typically those terms are about two years investing as a private lender. And of course, we have in all the notes a 90-day call option to where if they need their money back early in case of an emergency, then we have a, a way through that 90-day call option that they can get their money back early if they need it. Because we know life and circumstances happens you know, unexpectedly sometimes. Okay. All right. So the private investors come in as an investor. Uh, how, how do you structure them? Is it different for every deal or do they, are they involved in equity purchase or well, or just strictly as finance? Right. So each private lender, everything we do is what's called a one-off. So our private lenders are not investing in a fund uh, we, we, we have what's called syndication where people can invest in, in a fund for multifamily, but in all the single family houses, uh, it's all called one off. So we will have a private lender or a couple of private lenders that are funding a deal. So the private lenders act in the same capacity as the bank. So they're not getting part ownership or equity in the deal. They're getting a straight interest rate. And right now that's, you know, somewhere between eight and 10% in this market, depending on uh, the deal itself. But yeah, they get their own promissory note in North Carolina. It's a deed of trust, not a mortgage. So we're not borrowing any unsecured money. All of our private lenders notes are collateralized and are backed by the real estate that we're investing in. Okay. Well, cool. Jay, I'm I'm out of questions. We've got a minute, two minutes left. Is there anything you wanted to add that I haven't asked you about? Sure. Well, if someone is new to private lending and, and this book that I just recently released, the name of the book is Where to Get the Money Now. Where to Get the Money Now. You can get it on Amazon for 20 bucks or you can just get it for free, just cover shipping. This book, whether you're a real estate investor and you're wanting to raise private money, or you're an individual that just wants to get high rates of return safely and securely and be totally passive. In either case, this book is for you. You can get the book for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash book. So I'm an E-R, Connor. So again, that's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. I'll autograph it and ship it to you in the mail. This is not a downloadable ebook. Believe it or not, the post office is still in business. So I'll ship you the book. Excellent. Jay, thank you very much. We'll make sure I'll get the link down in the show. Okay, notes. everyone. My next guest is Myron Wellick. So Myron, welcome to the show. And take a minute, tell the folks a bit about yourself. First of all, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, so basically, I'm called the Jackhammer. And uh, hopefully people, know, you know, kind of find a way or make a way. I'm 70 going on 50. Uh, I, I kind of lost everything, really hit rock bottom in 2002. Took me 16, uh, 23, 24 years ago. It took me 16 years. Yes, 16 years. And around 67 years old, I reinvented myself. Uh, and my I'm a strategic partnership and business development expert. And one of the areas I work, in is I have a diversified group of uh, 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 of investors who I act as a, a consulting basis and trying to find them off market properties in the greater Montreal area. We focus now at you know what we look for in criteria is of course evolve and change and have to adapt to the times. 
uh, that were that were in. Uh, so today, uh, uh, we, we 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 most of them. I have quite a few are in the multiplex area. Uh, are, we're focusing more on smaller, six to 15, six to 20. We can go to 50 or 100, 150. But given the challenges of the interest rates and and and, and all the other things going on in, in October 2023, as you know, versus two, three years ago, uh, it's more challenging, put it this way, to, 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 to transact 100, 200, 300 year, uh, 300 unit property. It's not that the money's not there, it's there. It, it's more time consuming, complicated, and certainly challenging today. Uh, the well, sixth, fifth, yeah, sorry. What kind of what kind of strategy is it? Is it like a buy and hold? What do you do? You look for off market properties, I think. Is that correct? Is that? Yeah, they 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 look. My investors are in their thirties and forties, so they're building their portfolio and they look to optimize. That's that's the key. So can they? Um, can they renovate? Can they develop it? You know, they just buy and hold it and try to, and hopefully they're going to grow their criteria, uh, their, their portfolio. As you know, real estate's a very long-term game successfully. It, it takes years and years to successfully build, uh, hopefully a healthy portfolio. So they have the time. Like I said, they're in their thirties and forties. Uh, they're committed. Uh, some of them do it full time. Some of them don't. I find off market from a whole multiple of sources, direct owners, uh, professionals, you know, being a jackhammer in multiple ways. Criteria uh, varies, but, you know, they look at how much the cap rates are per door. Of course, that those variables vary according to the times on interest rates, of course, but 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 those numbers, uh, but they look at that. They look at the upside, most important. Uh, they look at now, they're looking at what are the uh, financial conditions where it wasn't a, a big deal two, three years ago. It is a big deal today. Uh, uh, for example, uh, balance of sales, et cetera. Okay. And what's what's the typical investor in, in your portfolio? The typical investor comes in with about how much cash to get into the program? Is that a, uh, is there a range? Uh, yeah, good question. I, I You know, whatever the demand, generally 30 to 40%, I understand, or 35 of, 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 of the uh, asking, you know, of the final agreed price, not the asking. I also look for, they're also, as, as you know, I, I'm sure it's the same in, in Edmonton and the rest of, of Canada or North America, industrial land is very, very strong right now. So I look for that. I look for strip centers as well, too. Okay, gotcha. So we're looking for folks with a reasonable amount of equity to invest, and we're looking to improve the properties and build on, on, on the improvement. Right. Yeah. So it's more of a, and do they long-term hold after that, or do we- Long-term. Sorry? Long term. Long term. Long term hold. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, great. So then people and do you do you tend to partner people together or individuals holding individual buildings? No, I don't partner anybody. I I I bring them together. I they're investors, they're buying. It's usually individual. It's always individuals. Uh uh the, who they have as as you know, who invests in all that, of course, it's their call as long as it is executed properly. But gotcha. but they're, they're they're you know, they're individuals. Uh, not a group, they're, they're individuals. I would say small to medium-sized investors uh, in the greater, greater, greater Montreal area. You know, Montreal and the, the secondary cities around Quebec City even go to a little bit to Ottawa, which is, you know, an hour, a two and a half hour drive from Montreal. It's not far. So, so from Montreal, that's the geographical uh, area. Okay, cool. And folks, uh, watch because Myra and I are going to be shortly having a, another interview on a full blown interview on your partnering, bringing people together and, uh, and, and the strategies you use there. So okay, we've got about a minute or two left, anything else on the investment strategy, investment model? No, just like, but just like everything else, um, you have to be a jackhammer always, you know, especially with that, meaning that, you know, you, you can't work hard enough. You got to be a, a, a innovative, aggressive, focused, be willing to adapt, you know, and especially now in challenging times, because they are in real estate and most most things, and 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 see how you could make things work because certain formulas that made things work in real estate, you know, because of the you know interest rates, the obvious things, the numbers don't work the same way and compute the same way they did two three years ago. They just don't, you know, whether they need more upfront, banks are more are more challenging. Which is normal. It's the ups and downs, the you know, the the highs and lows of any business of any industry. 
uh, it's, it's the challenge to adapt. It's a challenge to be resourceful, flexible. Uh, uh, they try to get creative in terms of how they can fight at, you know. Uh, and I think the good ones, the successful ones, uh, are the real entrepreneurs in real estate, like like anything in life, entrepreneurs who, when it gets tough, which it is now, no question, or challenging, whatever word you want to use, um, they find ways or they make a way to adapt. It, it, it's definitely challenging. Okay. Great. Myron, thank you very much. And uh, on to the next one now. All right. And my next investment model is with Martin Signs of Bequest Funds. Martin, welcome. And um, tell the folks a bit about your investment model, the what it is, where you invest. Yes. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on, Gerald. Um, we invest in various real estate and energy assets that produce consistent and predictable cash flow to ourselves and our investors, uh, particularly um, around residential mortgage notes, uh, commercial real estate, uh, such as medical office buildings, as well as energy assets, um, such as existing oil producing fields with Bitcoin mining off of stranded natural gas. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, with the hard assets, where do you invest? Do you invest in a certain geographical area all over the place? Yes. So um, as it relates to commercial real estate, uh, we focus on the southwest region of the United States. Um, as it relates to oil and gas, uh, we're, we um, primarily are focused on central Oklahoma. And as it relates to residential owner-occupied mortgages that we buy in pools, uh, we're spread out throughout the entire United States. <laughs> but oh. one thing remains, all the assets need to meet our criteria of producing consistent and predictable monthly income for ourselves. Well, that's excellent, because the next thing I was going to ask you was the why. And the why <laughs> is the uh, the passive income. Is that correct? What's the why of the fund? The why is the why is freedom of time. And, and uh, you know, I know some are working towards financial freedom and and other uh, they have other t uh, types of aspirations. But for me and our investors, we are seeking freedom of time to do what we want when we want. And in order to do that, you need a uh, predictable and consistent monthly passive income, and you need to build a portfolio of it um, over over the course of time. Okay. And so, who is your who would who would be your your ideal investor? Who would you know someone looking at listening to the podcast would say, "Oh, this is what I want to get into." Who who would be the ideal investor? What kind of you know? It's it's typical. I'll I'll tell you. It's really for monthly passive incomes for everybody. <laughs> I mean, every you know who cannot need that. Um, however, I would say that a uh, over fifty percent of our investors are entrepreneurs, and um, about seventy percent of our investors are are real estate investors of some kind. So I always kind of tend to think that anybody who's a real estate investor or entrepreneur, um, you know, they've been they've been uh, you know taken through the meat grinder a few times, and they appreciate uh, monthly passive income, um, you know, more than most. I, I I would say. I can attest to that one. <laughs> okay, and is there is there a minimum investment level to get in? Is there a maximum investment level? Is there a sweet spot? Yes, so it's uh, fifty thousand dollars is the minimum to invest into our our funds. We have a few fund options, but yeah, fifty k is the minimum. Okay, and then it just goes up from there to whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have yeah, we have people that are that are in for a few million and and, and beyond. Okay, and so how do people get into the fund, and how do they get out of it? Yeah, sure. So um, the fund funds are set up as to uh, for accredited investors. So it's a 506C Reg D income fund. Uh, there's two different fund options. Um, if you are an accredited investor, it's really a matter of filling out some forms, uh, being verified as an accredited investor, and then wiring the funds in. Um, as it relates to getting out, there's redemption periods based on um, various class levels. And so once you're <clears throat> up against the redemption period, you just let us know and you can pull your funds out as needed. 
Okay. And so these are these are American uh, legislation. Do you look for international investors as well? Canada, Mexico, Europe, other places? We don't have too many international investors, but we do have some Canadian investors um, in our funds. Okay.
All right. And so my next guests are Jen and Stacy Conkey with the Remote Multifamily Investing Academy. Ladies, welcome to the show. And uh, why don't you start out with, um, well, take a minute and tell the folks who you are and then the what, what your investment model is. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for having us, Gerald. Um, so this is Jen, and I am Stacy Conkey, and uh, we've both been investing for right around twenty years. And although our paths started, uh, you know, separately, we ended up coming together about eight and a half years ago. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about our business model um, in a minute. But when we started, we both lived in markets that were very uh, expensive and very competitive. And um, the way that Jen got started is she she started where she lived and it was it was challenging because we lived in expensive places i had the fortune of coming across a mentor who introduced me to the idea of remote investing which is live wherever you're going to live but invest where it's easier to invest and where the numbers make sense so uh, our paths were very different but once we came together we started really growing and scaling um very quickly and multifamily is is the area of real estate that we we focus on um, and it's not that every kind of real estate isn't good. There, different kinds of real estate are good at different times based on what's happening in the economy. Uh, multifamily is our favorite because it allows us to leverage our time in the biggest possible way. And particularly right now during a high interest rate environment, uh, multifamily helps us spread out the risk of, um, you know, a vacancy. If there's vacancy in a single family home, like you got to cover the whole thing yourself. You have a vacancy in a 10 unit apartment building, then you still have nine rents coming in. And in a 50 unit building, you still have 49 rents coming in um, and that kind of thing. But anyway, yeah. anything yeah. you want to add in the background department? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I think that uh, our business model is really to not only just multifamily, but specifically joint venture, multifamily, 15 to 35 units is the first place where we like to have people start off. We, we recommend that that's where you start because you can do a lot more with joint venture and then stair-stepping into syndication. So, and I, we believe that if you build your wealth in one area, and for us, it's been multifamily, then you can protect that wealth by diversifying and investing in other asset classes, which is something that we're looking at in the, in the near future. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So your model is uh multifamily 15 to 35 is where they start. And now I'm assuming you go more units as well. And your, your model also is, uh, you don't necessarily need to invest where you live, but where it makes sense to invest. Absolutely. Remote investing. Okay. Yeah. So who who would who would your model who are, who are you looking for? Who would appeal to as investors, and why would they get in? What would they be looking for to get into your model? Well, it's it's interesting because in in our world we deal with two different types of investors. We have people who are uh, active investors and passive investors, and what what that means is an active investor is someone who is they're actively involved in some way in running the deal, whether it was part of being on the acquisitions team or raising the capital or doing the asset management, like they're involved in the deal and making things happen. And then there's passive investors who are like, I love real estate. It's great, but I do not have the time nor the inclination nor the interest to learn all that stuff. But I do want to get a return on my money. And I do get that real estate is the way. So for Jen and I, one of the things that we've done over the years is position ourselves in both areas. We've been active investors for 20 years. Um, we've also done a couple of passive investments, but we're more comfortable being the ones who are involved. But we've just, you know, especially Jen had 22 years in corporate America. And we have, you know, we have tons of contacts that we've built over the years of people who are like, I love what you guys do. Real estate is the way multifamily, all the millionaires make their money that way. I know, but I don't have time. And so one of the things that we've ended up doing over the last couple of years is starting to allow those people who are not going to take the time to learn it to, to invest with us. And so they're the passive investors. We're the ones actively running the deal, making it happen. And they're like, cool, here's my money. Go make me a return. So, you know, we serve the active investors from the site, from the standpoint of like we, we mentor and teach them and we do the deals. Like we're literally doing it with them, holding their hand until they've, they've gotten through that first deal and closed it. And then they scale and scale and scale. And it's more of like, like we're just, we're holding their hands. We're mentoring them through it because that's what we are. We're active investors. And then on the passive investor side, they don't want to do all this stuff. We're able to serve that community by just being here, letting them get to know us, like us, trust us and allowing them or allowing us to go find the right deals that gives them 
a really solid return on investment. Yeah. The type of return they're looking for based on the amount of capital and their risk tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't cool. know if that was a crude question. If I answered no, your question. I, no, you definitely did. So what would be the range dollar range of your, of your, from your smallest investors to your biggest or the range you're looking for or sweet spot or however you want to handle that? What's the, what, what, what kind of dollar range investors are we looking for? So if somebody's on the active side, it's, it's a little bit different than the passive side, but on the active side, Generally speaking, it depends on the size of the property someone wants to get started in. But generally, if someone's got, you know, at least twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars, they can get started on the active side. Now, they're not going to fund all of the deal themselves. Like, n- there's no way you're going to get into apartments with only twenty-five thousand dollars. But that is enough to get started, put an earnest money deposit down, um, get an inspection, and pay for the due diligence, and then bring on a couple other people to partner with. They'd be bringing in the money and then do the deal together. So I would say twenty five thousand on the probably the lowest end where I'd be comfortable. On the passive side, it really depends on the deal. So we've done some deals where the minimum investment amount was a hundred thousand um, dollars, but we had management discretion if we there's some situation where we someone had only seventy five thousand and we had, we felt like there was room for them that we could let them in. But a hundred thousand is probably the most common. Um, but we're doing a deal right now where it's it's only 48 units and that one, the raise isn't that isn't as much. And so we were able to bring down the minimum investment to only 50,000. So that's for our passive investors. I don't know that I've ever seen a, a raise where the minimum was less than 50,000. That's mm-hmm. kind of the the bottom, but a lot of deals, the minimum is a hundred thousand. So, yeah. but between 50 and hundred at the baseline. And then we have some investors of ours who, you know, they have more capital. So they're putting in 200 to 300,000 into a deal because they like the deal and they feel like, it's it's a safe cash flow play and that's where they are in life. That's what they want. Okay. So your investors invest not in one huge corporation. They invest in each individual deal. Yes. Yeah. Sure. And that's something that we might, you know, we might look at changing in time because we know that the fund of funds model is certainly something we can do. And as we grow our business, we're continuing to have more access to more deals. So in the next year or two, we might adjust to just having a fund and then we go and select the deals. But as of right now, we just do one deal at a time where we go deep. We know the deal inside and out. Yeah. We know our investors and like what they like, what they don't like, who it's a good fit for, who it's outside, you know, their, whatever their investing model. Like one guy, we have a, a the deal right now that we were raising for is it's a, it's a seven year hold. It's just a cash flow play, seven year hold. And he was like, well, I don't want to do anything that's more than two to three years. So that deal is not going to be a good fit for him because it's going to be seven years where we have other people that are like, I won't do anything that's less than seven years because that's where I feel secure as far as giving the market enough time to get out of this high interest rate environment. So we just try to match our people. That's why we have to really get to know people, like try to match them up with what project that we're working on that makes the best sense for them. Because we're not, we don't want to take their their money. We want to help bring our investors and our deals together in a way that it makes the deal funded and the investors really excited to to know us <laughs> and to have been able to do that deal. Okay, cool. We only got about a minute or two left here. So quickly, um, where do you invest? Do you do a certain portion of the U.S. all over the world? Where quickly? Where do you? What's your geographic area? It's not all over all over the world right now. We only invest within the within the United States. That might change at some point, but right now we just invest it within the United States. And one of the things we always look at is what's going on in the markets. So we look at markets that are. Um, a couple things are going on. One, there is a steady or incline in the population, population growth and in job growth. So the one thing we never want to do is start putting a bunch of money or effort into an area where the population is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, because now you have the same amount of units and you have fewer people to fill to fill them. And so that makes your vacancy go up. So we always look for markets that are on the, on the rise, both oh, in job gosh. growth and population growth. And up until you know the last couple of years, we really looked at Midwest markets that were where the prices and the cash flow were just really strong. We've expanded now to markets that are just really, really strong, maybe not as much cash flow, but the market is so solid. You just want to own property there. Okay. So we might have a little bit lower return in those markets like Phoenix, Texas. What's the other one? Okay. Tampa. Tampa. All right. Okay. So we're, we're just about out of time here. So, but I do want to get one more question in because it's important. So uh, I, I'm assuming you'll, you'll, you deal with do you deal with American investors only, or you look at uh, Canadians, other people as well. Other it doesn't matter where the money comes from, right? It's just 
It yeah. doesn't. The, the only thing is if, if the if the money was coming from someone that wasn't uh, a U.S. citizen or was foreign, we just have to make sure that we've done all of the paperwork correctly so they can invest legally in the deal. But we have, you know, we have friends all over the world. Yeah. So Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, you've already answered how they get in. You've talked about how to get in. Uh, how how do people get out of the deals when it's time when they want to pull their money out? How, what's that process? So that's what we call the exit strategy. So when we are going into a deal, we always know going in what our primary exit strategy is and what our secondary exit strategy is, right? Jen used to be professional poker player. So she's all about having multiple outs. different outs, but we always know going in, like what is our, what's our preference? So um, if the idea is we're going to go into this deal to raise the revenue, decrease expenses, and then in five years, we're going to sell the building for this amount of money or projected amount. And then the, the profits just going to be distributed. Um, that would be one exit. Another exit, it probably isn't going to be relevant for a little while, but it was for a while, was uh, in a lower interest rate environment. The exit strategy might be to do a refinance after, after the building is stabilized and you've raised the value, refinance based on the new value. And that allows us to give our investors back the majority, if not all of their capital, but they still own the piece of the deal. So they still get the cash flow. So you just always know going in, you, you would never go into a real estate deal without knowing what your exit is. And we always have a secondary because let's say that the exit was supposed to be in three years from now. We, we won't do any deals that are that short, but let's just say it was the exit is supposed to be three years from now. And let's say the interest rates are not, um, or the market isn't, it's not the right time to sell. Like there's not going to be a good profit for the investors. Then at that point we would do business plan number two, which might be refinance, especially if the loan is ending, we don't really have a choice. So we always go in with multiple exit strategies and our investors know what those are before we start. Cause there's always risk. Our goal is to mitigate that risk as much as possible so that we can, you know, we can give our, our investors and ourselves the best experience. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Appreciate it. Again, my guests are Jen and Stacey Conkey with uh, remote multifamily investing Academy. That's their book on the shelf behind them. There, multifamily okay. freedom hacking. I guess it's on Amazon. That's yes. Right. Where else, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, make sure to give us a five-star rating. Give us a good review. Like, share, support the podcast. Right at the very end, you'll see that little subscribe button coming up. So make sure to hit that button. It'll come right down here, right at the very end after the closing credits. That's it. You've been listening to The Real World of Real Estate. Bye for now.